Hello folks, well today I've decided I'm going to have an attempt at my most challenging target to date. It's called the Jellyfish Nebula and it's a supernova remnant in Gemini and it's very very faint and I figured that tonight I'm going to forego more guaranteed targets like the Rosette Nebula or the Orion Nebula and have a little go at this and see how I get on. So um, yeah, I hope you'll join me in the evening's activities. My name's John and I make videos on camping, walking and astronomy. If you like what you see in this video then please check my channel out as you may find others that interest you there. But in the meantime, let's crack on with this video. So all the images that I've seen so far online and on YouTube and stuff of this target have been from people who've shot total exposure times of between sort of five and 12 hours and have been using individual exposures of perhaps some um, three minutes minimum up to around five minutes. I'm going to be attempting the target using 60 second exposures and if I'm lucky I'll get two hours worth of them. So this means that I'm not really going to be able to see the target in any individual exposures. So I'm not really going to have any idea whether I'm going to get anything out of the session at all until I process the image. The kit that I'm going to be using is the one that's behind me here, my uh, kind of normal deep sky setup which is a 60mm TS Optics refractor mounted on an EQM35 mount and I'm going to be using an Astro modified DSLR camera. In fact the target ideally suits a small refractor like this because it's relatively large um, but also I should be able to get a, hopefully a lot of the surrounding nebulosity that's around it. So um, yeah at least equipment wise I'm quite happy with what I'm doing. As I said earlier the target is in the constellation Gemini. It actually lies between two stars at the foot of one of the twins and um, these two stars are often visible to the naked eye. I'll have to see tonight whether they are from my back garden. Um, so it's relatively easy target to find to be honest, particularly if you can see these two stars at the, the foot of one of the twins. Um, if you can see those you can take a test shot and the jellyfish nebula sits in between these two stars. So the jellyfish nebula then sits about 5,000 light years away I think and it's all that's left of a, um, a massive star that basically ran out of its uh, nuclear fuel and exploded as a supernova explosion and all that we can see now, or all that we're left with, is a sort of shell of gases. And these gases bear more than a passing resemblance to a jellyfish. There's a, a, a head that you can see and some tentacles or tendrils that are behind that head. And uh, very long exposure times reveal quite uh, delicate and detailed pictures of the jellyfish. For me with my one minute exposures and probably two hours maximum exposure time, realistically I'll be happy with anything that vaguely resembles a jellyfish and I hope to see some of the um, surrounding gas clouds as well. Um, so yeah, I'll bring you back a bit later on when I take all my gear out and uh, keep my fingers crossed and hope for the best. Don't want to sleep tonight at all Just want to watch them stars fall But you don't want to try to make up dreams Just to be seen I want to lay here beside you Oh quiet Sky. It's not what we know, it's where we go. I go wings and tell her goodbye. Oh, it's not what we see. It's well, my two hours is up now, and I've just popped outside to um, see how things are going, and it's clouded over rather annoyingly, but 
looking back through the exposures, I reckon I've probably lost the last 20 or so. So the last 20 minutes of, um, of exposures I'm going to have to throw away. Um, so it's leaving me with about 100 to have a look at and see what I can do anything with. Um, yeah, so this basically means I'm going to call it an end to the day. I've had a look at one or two of the individual exposures and in some of them you can just about see the head part of the jellyfish nebula. So I'm quite pleased uh, that I've managed to get some of that and uh, hopefully tomorrow I'll take the 100 or so exposures, stack them up, process them and uh, see whether I can extract the nebula out of the data that I've got. So um, yeah, I'm going to say good night for now and see you tomorrow. Afternoon. Well, I've processed yesterday's images and in the end I've used 91 or 92 of the images that I actually took and put them into the uh, stacking program Sequitor. Um, I lost some images through star trailing or the mountain wobbling or something. And um, of course, of the two hours that I was hoping to get, I lost a good 20 minutes worth through the cloud coming over and not going away again. Um, but nonetheless, you know, an hour and a half's worth of exposures is better than a kick in the teeth. Not perfect, but um, not too bad. Way short of the sort of four to 12 hours that you see people doing. But uh, nonetheless, I took these images into processing. And uh, yeah, I was quite pleased or amazed, to be honest, to get anything out of it. Bearing in mind, I was sort of half expecting to do the whole thing and get nothing. Um, so yeah, the image that I got, I'm very pleased with. It's not going to win any awards, but for a small telescope, short exposures of a minute and only an hour and a half of them. Um, yeah, overall, I'm quite pleased. So uh, I hope you like it. I hope you can see the jellyfish that's in there. Um, I can, but then I know what I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope you like my image and I'll see you again next time. Take care.